What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and this is the beginning of my interview with Troy, obviously, of Hogwarts Legacy. I'm very, very thankful he was able to come on the channel and talk to me. I'm very, also, maybe even more thankful for you guys. It's all about you guys. Uh, you're the fans. We're uh, Actually, collectively, right? We're the ones who, uh, who kind of made this happen. But thank you so much for all the support you've given me. We go on quite the adventure in this interview. It's around an hour or so long. I'm sure I'm going to cut kind of parts, so maybe it'll be a little bit shorter. Uh, and just to kind of keep it clear, we talk about a lot of different things. We do talk about the controversy around Troy and Hogwarts with J.K. Rowling quite a bit. That's a, that's a good amount of it. And then we also ask some questions from you guys. And he talks a little bit about the game and about the history of it. So I think we cover a fair amount. He couldn't get specific, obviously. I couldn't ask him about character customization and the ending and the length of the game. Stuff like that is obviously stuff he was never you know allowed to answer he, he never could answer so that's the way it is so we'll go through it as this video goes on uh, I say at the end I guess I can say it here we're, we're definitely looking to get him back and, and I think he's willing to uh, as well uh, maybe just waiting for the next shoe to drop for Hogwarts Legacy so once there's like a gameplay thing or the next thing to fall from Hogwarts maybe we can have him back on or even on a live stream and we can get you guys talking to him directly okay something like that so enjoy the video thank you so much for the support for subscribing and, and all that stuff and uh here we go yeah as we're starting out uh I, I think that's a good place to start like what can and can't i say and why um uh, you know i made that video a while back where uh, i talked about uh you know sean murray right no man's sky yeah and uh, i i think it's really important for people who are in the games industry or or especially fans to say well answer that question well, well why doesn't you know why don't the developers just get out there and start you know talking about how great the game is and all the features that are going to be in it and, you know because we're, we're the enthusiastic ones right you don't work on a game for a long time without you know feeling like hey this is going somewhere this is going to be good right which is you know so that's my opinion right up front the game's <laughs> going to be great right that's that's where i'm coming from but i have to be careful when i say that because i could set expectations and get people going oh you know <laughs> troy levitt hogwarts developer says it's going to be the greatest thing ever and then people start to have these expectations. And, and I took Sean Murray to task on that, you know, way back six years ago. Oh, yeah. And I think it really hurt the reception of No Man's Sky, right? Because he had, he had been on the Colbert Report and talking up the game and everybody had this idea about what it was going to be. And then it comes out and people are disappointed. The Hello Games credit, they then, you know, worked really hard on them. And now yeah, No Man's Sky is a really bad. great game. Yeah. But that's that's what I'm talking about. So when I'm when I'm being very careful about what I say, it's not because I'm really afraid of non-disclosure or something like that. I, I, I've worked enough around press. I kind of know what I can and can't say. Yeah. But it's more not to mismanage expectations and get fans all like thinking the game's going to be one thing when it's really not. Right. And so that's that's why I'm being careful is because I believe in the game. I think you need to te or treat it with a certain amount of kind of respect um, as it's going through development, right? Leave the development team to do their job sort of thing. Yeah. So that's 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 the framing, right? It's, it's not because I'm... Uh, don't want to talk about the game i'd love to go talk about the game and all the awesome stuff in it but i need to be very cautious until you know the announcements are made and things come out yeah no i was, I was gonna say yeah I, I if i'm framing things up i'm an enthusiastic developer <laughs> who believes in the project right that's that's where i'm coming from but take everything i say with that grain of salt right you know i'm form, gonna say form your own opinions positive. form your own opinions listen to what you know wb has to say you know go to the official sources is what i'm getting if, if you're looking to me to give like you know, leak or a secret or something like that. I'm Are you saying do you don't know the game. release date and the specific, even though it's been delayed, so you wouldn't know anyway? Yeah, people I wouldn't like, know. I, I'm, I'm, uh, well, I'm that's what I was thinking anyway. It's like, would you even know because it was delayed and then you let, you know what I mean? So, like, you, you wouldn't know unless you reached out. You know what I mean? Right. Well, I still have friends, right, at the yeah. studio, right? And like, like we were playing VR mini golf the other day, but we don't talk about the state of the game, right? <laughs> we talk about things like uh, other games and what we're liking in the other games we're playing, or we talk about stuff going on with friends and family. Yeah, we don't we don't discuss the game because that's kind of a an estate to get together with your right. buddies, right? Yeah, and uh, and I think that's important for people to recognize that we kind of have an understanding that it's best for me to be willfully ignorant of the game, right? <laughs> I need to keep some distance and not know too much because that could be a liability. Yeah. And so I actually strive to do that. I, I don't like press people. I'm not trying to find things out. And I'll get a lot of questions like like the rumor that happened last week. Oh, Hogwarts Legacy is delayed 2023. You know, my my uh, my email and my my Twitter <laughs> messages light up like, Troy, can you tell us about this? I'm like, I just don't know. Right. I'm, I'm out of the loop now. I'm not trying to know either. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to be able to 
know or answer rumors that are that specific, certainly. And, and it's not my, my role to do that. You know? Yeah. Well, moving back, yeah. moving backwards from there, and this isn't, yeah. I think I got your question. When you left, how did you feel mm -hmm. about the state of the game? Like you felt you, so you, you're confident and you're happy about it. Now you felt equally the same when you left too, I assume. Yeah. Um, in fact, the, the, the whole reason that I came back to working on the game, uh, so so a little bit of my history with uh, Hogwarts Legacy, maybe if people are interested. So I, I worked for Disney, right? Disney shut down the Avalanche Studio in 2016, and I wasn't really sure if I wanted to go back to kind of the mainstream big development title games. I'm, I'm always very interested in indie games. But then, you know, I started to find out what they were doing. They invited me back. I did some contract work there first. And the more I looked at the product and what they were doing, the game and stuff, I started to go, this is going to be pretty cool, right? <laughs> I started to get that, like, I, I think I want to be involved with this. And so I came back out of a, a out of a shared passion for the property, a shared passion for, you know, what they were trying to do. It's really, I felt very early on that the game was being driven by a push for two things, quality and authenticity, right? And those are important to me when you're working with a property. So I, uh, I believed in the game quite early. And even when I left, I was still in a state of believing in the game, right? I'm like, this is going to be a good game. <laughs> um, if if, uh, if I didn't have the family issues that brought me back to Clark County, Nevada, and if I didn't have all the press issues, then I'm pretty sure I would still be on the game, right? It was kind of that the two things had to come together. Like if I didn't have the family issues that were putting pressure and I only had the press issues, I would have stayed. You know, I would have stuck it out and wrote it out, even though it was hard Brave. to be quiet about <laughs> things. But if I only had the family issues and they hadn't raised those issues there, my plan was to see the game all the way through. I was not planning on leaving the game. I was trying to juggle those things. That's why I moved down here. Yeah. You know, the main reason I wanted to support Troy or even what we were talking in the first place is because of, you know, that controversy stuff. Uh, I try to, you know, dabble in that stuff without making the entire channel just about, you know, the, the evils of the game industry. But I really, obviously, because of the affection I had for Hogwarts, once the, start, the stuff started happening with you, I had to, you know, support you. And I've made more videos even past your uh, response, right, on YouTube, which, by the way, if anybody, you know, watching hasn't watched Troy's thing, it's a, it's a good watch. It really explains everything better, you know, than we can do it here. So I guess just want to, kind of talk to you about that a little bit. I am always fascinated in it. The, the J.K. Rowling stuff obviously has come up always. Um, I guess to, to lay it just flat to start and then we can go more in depth, you know, what are your thoughts on it? Maybe did anything change? Do you think anything different now versus a year ago or what was all that like for you, you know, going through it? This is like a quick recap. Right. Um, let's, let's, it's, it's kind of tricky to know where's the best place to dive in. I mean, we could talk yeah. with the, the press and stuff that kind of reflected on me first, but I, I think it, it may be a little bit easier to understand or start from the JK Rowling, you know, issue, because when I look at it and I have to be honest about it, I don't think that it was really about me. Right. No, no. Um, I think it was more about Rowling. Right. And, yeah. and, and the proof of that to me is that there was like three years where my channel was dead. Right? I wasn't <laughs> doing anything. I was focused on the game. I wasn't even worried about it. And and then when the press came out, they were talking about articles that were five and six years old, right? Yep. And that, that to me is really kind of a strange thing it, it, uh, because it wasn't like there was an instigating incident. I like, you know, I didn't send a mean tweet. I wasn't accused <laughs> of sexual harassment. And there's the, basically the story about my channel is not a newsworthy story. Really, right. Somebody right? like went out to find it. That's uh, truly right. it's the only way it could have, you know, even if you look at, like a Gina Carano thing with Star Wars, like that's something where whether you like her or not or agree with her or not, like she was there, she'd make small splashes, you know, on Twitter here and there. But like, like you said, like you were never like, oh, every month or two you do something that gets people's attention, literally just out of left field, you know, labeling you the wrong name, the wrong position of the job and all that stuff onward. It's like it came out of absolutely nowhere. Uh, it really, I think, right. is just more of the narrative of hating on the game from from the media. That's and, and I want to make it clear, you know, for anybody watching, like my opinions are when I talk, you know, Choi's opinions are when uh, he right, talks. Right. But I I really think it's been known for a while. Like the media has, you know, a vendetta against Hogwarts, and I think using you, they'll do whatever they need to do, you know, at, at specific points to take the game or whatever your version of take the game down is. I don't even know what their end goal you know, what this whole stupid plan of theirs is. Right. Um, and, and I think I think you really analyze that quite well. That's a lot how I see it, too. So, I, you know, I, I appreciate <laughs> yeah. coming from that, that really it's about J.K. Rowling. And and 
So I've been pretty public, right? That I'm like, I'm not in complete alignment with JK Rowling's ideas, right? Or especially as it relates to the transgender community. That being said, I can also see that, you know, JK Rowling has created this wonderful, rich world, you know, the wizarding world and all these houses and all, you know, the, 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 the four houses are <laughs> awesome, right? Each of them represent different ideas, uh, 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 kind of almost personality types. Yeah, it's like the characteristics. Or yeah. Sort of thing, right? Um, there's this rich history that goes all the way back, you know, that she's developed that ties clear back into the Arthurian legends and Merlin, right? It's it's just a wonderful, rich property, right? And people love exploring it, and it's all about heroics. It's all about doing the right thing, you know. It's it's a very great property, and then she, to me, J.K. Rowling has this warm heart where she's uh, kind of in that classical liberal approach to things. And so she's done a lot of good, right? Oh, yeah. Donated right. money and all, yeah, I mean, tons of stuff. Exactly. And so I, when I have a difference of opinion with her, I can say, well, I disagree on this thing, but I'm going to be an adult about it, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to like try and say, well, because we disagree on this one, even if it's a very important issue, right? Um, th th that doesn't mean I have to poke out my eyes so I don't see her again, right? Which is what this always feels like to me, that the whole, we need oh, yeah. to... That we you guys are, are responsible. The makers of the game are the ones responsible. You should just stop your job. Is really what they're saying because of her. Right, right. It was like it was like collateral cancel culture. Yeah. Right. It's like <laughs> we really want to cancel J.K. Rowling, and so anything that she has anything to do with, we're going to try and get to. And you know, and and it's been pretty clear that she's not even actively involved with the game. I mean, right. they've been very clear in the press. Yep. But at the same time, you know, I'm kind of defender. I'm like. She's a voice. She's why do we want to silence that voice, right? Yeah. She's she's got an opinion. If if you're going to if you're going to be open to everybody's perspectives, you can't be silencing voices even if you disagree with them. And yeah. uh that's that's my opinion on kind of the controversy. Right. They don't act it's they they preach that, especially the gaming media. They'll preach, you know, every inclu inclusivity all this stuff, but really we know it's their way or the highway. And that's not even just proven with you as a, a game developer, but people like Colin Moriarty, right? I respect him a ton. I mean, I think he defended you as well. But yeah, great guy. Um, you know, those are the kind of people that, you know, again, yeah, you can have disagreements or you don't have to agree on everything. It doesn't mean you shouldn't have a, a job or you, you should cancel the game. So let me ask you by extension of that, both you, know, you can tackle them together or separate or whatever, what – was it like you talked about how you know WB was very you know good to you even during that time like there was nothing bad but what did you know was there any feelings with like your coworkers like any added pressure and also the whole when it, I guess what I'm really trying to ask and you if you can't answer it you can't but when the JK Rowling stuff happens you know every couple months back then when there'd be those hit things like do you guys feel that um for the most part I'm gonna say no uh, I, I, I know that a lot of the folks on the team are sensitive to those issues, right? But we have PR and marketing teams that are kind of managing that. As far as the team itself, I think most of the team, most of the time, is focused on just making a quality, authentic project, right? That's yeah. that's what they're that's what they're about. They want to make a, a good game. So these are distractions, right? When they come up, uh, especially if it gets back to development. But it's not like a day to day discussion that that's going around. At least not in my experience, right? the game is the thing in the studio they're really focused on just making a great game now in my case once that hit it became a huge distraction for me <laughs> right yeah. because now i have to have calls all the time with you know hr i have to have calls with the the general manager i have to you know i have to be very careful about what i say and, and you know wb was pretty clear with me right up front you know hey be careful here they, they weren't saying don't say anything but they're saying be careful what you do say uh, because of how it could reflect on the project, right? And, and you're saying and, saying back to when the controversies were coming at you, right? Okay, yeah, yes, yeah. That that when because my first my first impulse as soon as that comes out, and I'm like, oh, they are misrepresenting me, and they're misrepresenting the channel, they're misrepresenting J.K. Rowling, they're misrepresenting. You know, it, it very felt like an ideologically driven press, right? It yeah. was it was like they they had an agenda to push, and and I wanted to speak out against the agenda. What are you guys trying to do here? What is the point of this? Yeah, but you know. Uh, WB and I think quite quite wisely. Yeah, that's saying, fair. Take yeah. take a deep breath. You know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't don't make it worse. And and uh, and so that was their advice to me, right? But but you know, I have friends. They see the the press articles and they're like, they want to ask me about it. How are you responding? And 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 you and so it's a big disruption, I think, just because they targeted somebody in development, and I was in a position where I was touching a lot of a lot of things. 
And and so, yeah, all those things are now jeopardized by the fact that I'm not able to focus my attention as much there. Right. So, and I can't actually imagine. Maybe it'll happen. Maybe I'll have the honor of it happening to the channel one day of just that kind of, you know, spotlight where it's just they don't they don't even understand. Like, and like we've said, they didn't even do the basic, you know, knowledge research to know what your job position even was or. I don't know anything, and, and nothing really sticks out about anything you've ever said. You know, I, I really think it it's J.K. Rowling. It's so it's that idea with Hogwarts, and then it's also I don't even know. Like he stumbles upon a guy who works there, and maybe most people are quiet, and then you just kind of go against the grain, and so it's an easy target. Yeah, you know, I got to imagine that's all it was, and then it just and it really maybe even wouldn't have been that bad, but then everybody. You know, at like Kotaku, PC Game. I've called these these right. sites out before. I'm not afraid of, of that. But you know, these sites just lumped on, and before you knew it, you know, it was everywhere. Insane. Right. So it was a you know, like cut and paste journalism. Oh yeah, right? it was the same. It was the same Grab title. It. We're not even gonna fact check it. That just is too good of a story. We gotta <laughs> run with it. So we're just gonna run with the next version of it. Oh, he's alt right. He's anti feminist. And I don't think most of the the uh, outlets were even reviewing the videos. No. And, and the reason I think that is. You know, they, they would tell you why I'm why I'm dangerous, right? Why I'm a heretic to the religion, because that's what it felt like, right? Uh, by telling you titles that were, you know, they had combed through my site and they said, oh, you know, he's got crazy titles like uh, in praise of cultural appropriation, right? Wow, that's a really bad thought. How can he think that, you know, uh, cultural appropriation and cultural appreciation are kind of the same thing, you know, which is the point of that video. Or I had the video. Well, this one got a lot of boost, actually. The uh, defense of John Lasseter which, you know, I was not defending sexual harassment. I thought it was very clear. I was defending forgiveness, right? I was like, you know, we, we've got this crazy cancel culture when people make mistakes that we have to wipe them out and, you know, we, they, they can't do anything else. And and so I was saying, you know, I don't really know much about the, the issue surrounding John Lasseter, but as a person, as somebody who'd worked with him, I like having his voice in the world. You know, yeah. I don't think his voice should be silenced over this. Maybe he needs to go repent of things and make things better and learn some lessons. That's fine. But I'm in favor of welcoming them back. So, yeah. you know, th that was kind of my attitude. And that's the stuff that they were calling me out for, which I thought was really interesting. That's hilarious. Right? That, <laughs> they, that they seemed, um, they seemed uh, afraid of my ideas, I guess. Oh, yeah. It was almost like this strange validation, like, well, why this guy? Well, we don't like his ideas. He's a heretic, right? They, yeah. And to me, it's very religious. You'll see, you'll see this through my my videos. I'm trying to figure out what's going on to yeah. our industry, right? And it, and it's like there's this new religion creeping yeah. in, setting new standards without really being based in science or evidence. It's just emotion, and and, uh, yeah. I mean, and that's I, a lot. Of I've honestly called it a hive it. mind. I mean, cult is a definitely a powerful word, but I mean, yeah. they're in it together, and. and you know, I, there are good people. I mean, I, th I think we both know that there's definitely good people out there. But whenever I talk about it, I always bring up the example of, you know, the, and, and really with these cut and paste articles, it literally is this one person sitting next to the other person in an office at IGN or whatever. They're the same people. You could cut, you know, one of them could just be the other one. You see their names on the articles, but it really doesn't matter. They're all saying the exact same thing. Right. So that's what and, and really it is a majority because if you're not in that majority you're kicked out and that's what tells you that right, it is right. it is the uh gaming media uh majority if it's, it's very you know religious. oh yeah yeah it's it's, it, it's, it's a like mindset an it's, an, yeah, it's an ideology it's a mindset that right. you have to be part of them or you're not and that's very funny to people like us that just want to have conversations you know like we can disagree right, or right. agree or whatever and what's funny is that's what they always preach but that's a lie in reality it's their way or no way and that's these examples just show it to me it's always done it and that's what's very very powerful about yours is you weren't even saying anything radically you know crazy it's just somebody right, I, that's I, a I, little outside of their hive mind um, yeah, yeah. They, they would say uh, people would look at my videos and they would say, oh, they're kind of they're kind of mellow. They're kind of mellow. <laughs> yeah. right? They're like this, they're kind of soft. I mean, you're not loud. Mellow. You don't yell. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> there's that. too. I, I never call for like anything crazy. You know, I'm, I'm never like, hey, you know, I'm so angry at Brianna. Wu. We need to get her in dipper and chocolate or something. You know, I, I don't go there. Yeah. Um, I, at times I did confuse ideas with ideologues, but that's that's a longstanding tradition when you're trying to engage in these sort of discussions. You know, if, if I were talking about, say, uh, Stalin or something, I put a dunce cap on him. You know, that that that's really about his ideas still. Right. 
Yeah. That's and that's I was trying to keep my focus on ideas. Of course, you go back and you look at your old videos. And you're like, ah, I could have done better. <laughs> yeah. You know, there were there were times when I started to get my emotion would get in the way and and uh, and really. Well, that's growing. Kind of that's growing. And like you said, with with uh, forgiveness and being able to, or even uh, I know this is crazy. The idea of like changing your mind or changing your opinion or evolving. Right. You know what I mean? And that's uh, they can't do. And that's why when they say I saw I rewatched your video right before we did this just to refresh. Uh, and you said like the consequence culture, which always makes me laugh that that's what they call it. It's just, it's not cancel culture. It's consequence culture. Co consequence meaning you're fired. They want you honestly dead most times. Uh, and you're never allowed back right. in. Really, the most important thing is you're never allowed back. So there can never be that forgiveness, taking the steps for the people right. that need that. And some people like you, that's not even a, a thing. You know what I mean? That doesn't even need to happen. Uh, or like a Gina Carano, honestly, I'd even say that for her too. There's no need to, you know what I mean, go to therapy sessions with these people and all that stuff. It's You disagree. So what? Right. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and it's it's still pretty important, though, to kind of keep an eye on, on what's going on. You know, because I, I, I kind of did the bow out. But, you know, I could go to indie games. Or actually, I've been spending a lot of times in uh, religious circles uh, with because my, my background is in, in uh, Mormonism, right? I, I grew up. Uh, in that background and then i left it and became a uh you know skeptical liberal atheist right <laughs> but so i'm, I'm kind of went the, the whole yeah, thing the right so but i'm very interested in religion and how it impacts people's minds yeah. and to me you know what this was coming into the game industry was this new religion that i think now kind of has a face on it uh the kind of wokeism and i'm actually glad to see that other people are seeing this now too uh, oh, yeah. john mcwhorter uh he's uh from he's a columbia professor was just on the Andrew Yang show, right? Talking about wokeism as a new religion. And he's a, he's a, you know, he's a liberal black man, right? So he's, he's seeing it too. And he's like, we, we gotta, we gotta knock this off. You yeah. know, it's becoming very ideological and we should be talking to each other as uh, recognizing each other's core humanity. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's my opinion. Right. Uh, and I think you can see it in my videos is I'm, so here's the, the good thing I want to say about social justice movement and identity movements. I think that their, their hearts are good, right? At the, at the, if you go all the way down, I think what they're looking for is equity, you know, uh, diversity, inclusion. These, these are kind of good things to want, but you want them for the different ideas and perspectives that, that these different viewpoints bring into the world. Yeah. So, so my, uh, my whole criticism kind of revolves around, I think, wokeism inflames tribalism, right? It makes it makes people into their tribes, and I'm like, how about we just focus on the individuals? <laughs> yep, it, be, it becomes it, it gets further away from what it started. Like the fundamentals of where it started is good, but then it starts to implode, or I guess get so big that it will implode, and it gets to them doing the stuff that they're so against a lot, a lot of times. Gaming industry, right, politics, right. That, uh, kind of U-shaped theory, yeah. right? If you start out thinking that we're all for the oppressed. And you know, worrying about these dynamics of oppressor and oppressor, and then in the end, do it to other we people. become the oppressor. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. And uh, and I think that I think the way out of that cycle is to focus on the individual as much as possible because you don't want to silence any voice, right? You know, uh, I, you know, it doesn't matter what community they come from. You want to listen to them, and so that's why I'm I'm kind of protective of any minority voice. That's even why I was like trying to look at the other side of GamerGate in some of those videos is that I was like, you know, you're not getting the full story in the press because Gamergate is mostly criticism of the press and they don't want to publish criticism <laughs> of themselves, right? Yeah. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, uh, Moriarty, right? Yeah, Colin Moriarty. Moriarty. Um, uh, I almost said Brian Moriarty, <laughs> but, uh, who I love, by the way. He's a, he's a really great guy. But Colin Moriarty was talking to Dave Jaffe. Dave Jaffe uh, in a video recently said, um, you know, what's the deal with Gamergate? They never like had a manifesto or what were their ideals? And and, that, and I'm like, well, actually, they've had them for years and years and years. They keep trying to get them in the press, but the press won't listen to them. Right. So it's it's kind of kind of funny that goes on. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, I mean, it's it's, uh, it's concerning. I, yeah. I, I hope we're at the end of it. It feels like we're at the end of it in terms of Hollywood. Like we're getting to that point where you're just upsetting people with every move you make. Gaming, I I kind of believe we're like in the middle. Like we have to go through a little bit longer of it being not so good or even getting worse before it gets better. That's just my opinion. Um, you know, I don't know. Just because we're still there with very heavy voices or these things happening. I mean, this literally just happened to you last year. You know what I mean? So right. it's still going on. It is upsetting people. I mean, especially as time goes on, I don't see support for them. I see support for you. And that's being biased, I guess, but who cares? Uh, but that's just, you know, that's that's what I see. 
I think when the game comes out, specifically about Hogwarts, you know, the, the I guess the appreciation and the, the power on your side is – it already is overpowering them, and I think it'll, you know, continue to. Okay, so Mike Denhan, I want to get to his because this is outside of Hogwarts, but it's still into gaming. Um, if you watched Troy's video back when, you know, the stuff was going down, you talked about indie stuff. So his question was simply, is that still going on? Do you still plan on doing an indie game someday? Well, uh, thanks for asking that question. I actually taught myself Game Maker Studio 2, I think, and I made a little prototype game where you've got like skeletons coming down from the sky on parachutes and they float down. You've got a cannon and you shoot them down. So I, I, I taught myself how to program as part of what I've been doing in, in my retirement time. I actually have a little bit of programming background, so it was fun. And I thought, well, maybe I can make this into kind of a roguelike game where you get more and more like different cannonball types and different things. But I haven't really pursued that. So the question is, will you get back into indie game? Yeah, probably. You know, I, I really like that scene. Um, I think it's where things are really creative. Like, for example, I think the best game of 2020 was Hades, yep. which was, you know, such an a indie good game. game. Uh, such a good game and done so smartly. I mean, uh, game industry should be, um, I think, digging into that game. The way that they tell stories in that are kind of really fascinating. They do this linear sort of progression where each character kind of has their own storyline that advances but it's a linear progression you get one after the other so what happens is that as you go through the game every time you come back right you uh, you learn a new piece of the story from whoever you're interacting with or whichever god you interact with and so what that means is you just got this really cool expanding universe feel all the time you're always learning a new story but it's not tightly scripted right it's not like you have to do these things so i, yeah. I think it's a, a different way of telling stories that's worth investigating yeah. Yeah, so so I can't tell anything specific, but here's what I know about about the game industry. When when uh when a big publisher like WB releases a trailer, they're setting expectations, right? They're telling you what the game is going to be, and and I think that's very important for people to recognize because a lot of the questions are like, what are the graphics going to be like? And I'm like, did you look at the trailer? <laughs> you know, that's that's that they're telling you kind of up front. What's the what's the music and audio going to be? Look at the trailer, right? They're they're setting expectations. Uh. I have to tell you this little story. Part of why I wanted to talk to you is um, because I care about the game. You know, sometimes I follow what other people are saying about the game. Well, one site out there, I don't remember which one, had something like, uh, you know, six minutes of gameplay reveal or something, right? Could and be. it's actually it's actually fans have put together, or fan, I don't know, it's put together, you know, some pain over, I guess, of uh, Ron, Harry, Hermione, you know, interacting with a goblin in this video. And I saw that. And I'm like, uh, that's definitely not Hogwarts Legacy, right? Yeah. Uh, and then I go to the uh, to the comments and I type that in. You know, this this is beyond this point. That's definitely not Hogwarts Legacy. In fact, you know, it says right in the fact on the page over there. Twelve questions in, Hermione, <laughs> Hermione, Ron, yeah. uh, Harry, they're not in the game, right? It says that right there. So clearly, well, what happens is whoever's moderating that deletes my comment, yeah, right? Because they want clicks, right? Yeah. It's it's. Uh, and, and I see that a lot, that, that there's a lot of rumors about a big title. And so they'll even kind of engage in a bit of disinformation because it's so like clickbaity, right? Yeah. And uh, and that's part of um, what I would say if I have a message like, well, what's going on with the game? Let's go to the site, go to the, your community manager. They they will tell you, especially as things get developed, right? That's, that's going to be your source of information. Uh, and they'll dispel the rumors. They'll tell you what the game is like through the trailers. You know, you, you'll get your best information from there. You yeah. won't get it from rumors. Right? <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, it's tough. I respect the grind of, of people who make the Hogwarts videos, but stuff like that is I, I've tried to keep it just very. Will they do this? Will this be? You know what I mean? And just have the discussion. You know what I mean? Yeah. What I like about you is that you'll say maybe it's true, maybe it's not true. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, we yeah, need yeah. confirmation, and that that's a that's fine. I mean, you know, that's a good state to be in because it's fun to be excited about a new game. And what are the latest rumors? I mean, that's that's oh, all yeah. great. Yeah. You know, I, I don't I don't want to I don't want to ever push because there, there are good rumors and there's good uh, you know industry insiders and stuff, but you know sometimes they're wrong or and then there's people that'll just kind of pop up to say s stuff and people care. I think ultimately cuz you'll get the comments of of people that say not just on mine, but I'm sure other Hogwarts ones of either you're milking it or like the clickbait stuff. I mean ultimately it comes from just a a passion and people really do just want to learn. I think that's fair to even say to the, you know, the people that, that we're not reading the comments or we can't read the comments because of spoilers, like they care and you know, they care the, well, I guess actually this walks me into a question. I, I will read a couple other, their, their comments, but when it comes to fan 
care, I guess, or enthusiasm, mm -hmm. how much does that make its way? Like, do you guys hear fans? Do you guys know about video? I'm saying when you were working, do you knew about YouTube channels, whether it's mine or others, or uh, do you hear like what fans want, what they don't want? Does that seep through? Yes, it does. Um, especially for those of us who are in the game industry because we want to make great games, right? That's the whole <laughs> point we're here. Uh, like, like you made videos after I had left that was like, you know, what top 10 things we'd yeah. like to see in Hogwarts Legacy, top 10 things we don't want to see in Hogwarts Legacy. Those are great videos. Uh, those are the sort of thing that I think most developers like to see when they go out saying, hey, what's what's going on out there? Um, that doesn't mean that, you know, they're going to do all those things or not do all those <laughs> yeah. things, right? But it's a good way to take the temperature of, of what people are looking for. And, you know, as I said earlier in our discussion here was that I really do think the studio is just dedicated to an authentic product and a quality product. Yeah. And and they want, you know, they want people who play it to say, yeah, this is, this is the game I want, you know, as right. much as they can. There's always limitations. They can't <laughs> do everything. Somebody's going to say, you know, I really wanted this and it didn't oh, yeah. show up. That, that's what I've always stressed but, in uh, those you know, theory videos of you know will there, will there will there be an animagus or will there be patronus and i i i remember saying out loud in every single one it got boring because i would say the same thing it's like i know we want it whether it's there or not but you have to understand like they can't do all the you know i make 30 theory videos odds are all 30 are not going to come true you know what i mean you can't do all of it as a game developer yeah. so i would try to stress that very much that i get being disappointed I get it. You know, I mean, I th I'm one of the channels that, you know, if there are criticisms and stuff, it's like, you're okay. It's okay to be, you know, upset, not attack, not threaten, you know, go, go stuff like that. But you have every right to be disappointed or to be, ups you know, to be uh, let down or whatever. That's up to you to, to let that influence you. But just to, you know, be clear when we talk uh, wand customization, right? I don't know if you've seen the checklists of what people want from wands. It's extensive. Oh, I've seen them. Yeah. 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 I mean, they want, and, and maybe it is. And if it isn't, you got, I think you got to understand, I guess, why. It could be a criticism. It could be something that everybody thinks. You know what I mean? And, and it's a point deducted from Hogwarts that, oh, they didn't nail the wand stuff. But maybe there were just limitations or maybe it was this reason or that. You know what I mean? You got to keep that stuff in mind, especially when you want 500 things from it, you know, which people right. do, as you've seen. Yeah, that's that's very insightful. I mean, I mean you're getting right at the core of things. Um, like, uh, well, as I was saying... The, the uh the the whole property is just so rich there's so much you can do with it right yeah. but i think if anything one of the problems that we had to deal with or you know probably continue to have to deal with <laughs> is we have a surplus of good ideas we have so many ideas that we could do in the world that you end up in these discussions about well what's more important or what what can we do better you know right. th these are it's it's really there's an opportunity cost right well yep. if we're going to put our resources on making this really great well we can't really do this other thing over here really great so we have to balance things out and try and get those resources distributed covering as much of the ideas that we think fans want as we can exactly you know that's yeah. it, it, it's uh it's all these trade-offs that you're always making um but that doesn't mean that there are like bad ideas right. out there right it's 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 has more to do with what can you do well in right the time no, totally that. The, we've, i've talked about that for quidditch right the idea of well quidditch is so cool and to have the full game but it's like can we realistically say somebody can make a full uh ea sports game of quidditch along with the base hogwarts game that you see in the trailer that's you know what i mean so just to keep those expectations in check whether it you know what whether it happens or not doesn't matter you know i want to so this actually goes into what you've talked about uh twice now uh this comes from angelo i'd like to hear his response to what is it like working on a game that so many have been dreaming about for years or how does it feel working on a project in a fictional universe that so many people around the world care about have the expectations helped or hindered the process I think, it's a, I, I think it's all to the plus side, you know, yeah. <laughs> it, it's great to be working on a, on a, or to have been working on a, a really great title. Right. I have to be careful. I still kind of do that <laughs> weeping. Like I'm part of the team because I felt like I was really integrated in it. Uh, and yeah. now I have to go, well, then out there working on it. But, um, well, your name but, should still be yeah. at the end. Right. Or would it be like when they do? Uh, the... I suspect it should. I, I'm pretty sure I'll be in the credits. I mean, <laughs> Avalanche in particular had this very interesting way of doing credits. And I think they're, they've done it through most of their games which is basically did you touch the game yeah we'll put you in the credits yeah. right and and they they usually don't you'll notice in avalanche's titles they usually don't uh, list titles like they don't say oh here's the general manager and oh, here's okay. the main producer and here's they don't do that they just say here's a here's a list of everybody <laughs> who worked on the title in alphabetical order 
Yeah. And uh, I don't know if they'll do that again. But uh, historically, there was like this, we all have a part to play in this, right? You know, from from uh, our new intern artist all the way up to, you know, somebody who's doing uh, some sort of lead artist role, right? They, right? they all contribute. And I think that Avalanche was good to recognize that. Yeah. Nice. And I guess, and, and two, because I know, I don't know if there was a specific person that ever asked this, but I know I've always seen this kind of stuff in terms of the uh, knowledge of Harry Potter, the Wizarding World, I think, to be more specific or open, I guess. What's that like? Like uh, Because, you know, when, when there was the leaks and stuff, there'd be like, you know, the encyclopedia that people had spotted on, on people's desks of just learning about it. So was there like, a, I don't know, like a refresher course for people? How, how much do people, I guess, need to know about the world before they work on the game, if any? Kind of depends on, I guess, where they would be working. Yeah, the position. I, I... Yeah. If the question, as I interpret, is are there Potterheads on the team? You know, <laughs> and the answer is yes. Yeah, you know that there are there people who be. are very deep fans of 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 the whole Wizarding World, right? Yeah. Uh, and then you know all degrees, right? I think there are some people who are less engaged with it. You know, I've got. I think I've still got these are my wife's. Those are the Harry Potter books oh, right nice. there, right? So I was, <laughs> I was uh, reading through those, and I, I think the films did a really great job. So you know, it kind of depends, but. Uh, the environment, the, the the wonderful wizarding world is just full of opportunity, right? So everybody, even people who maybe weren't big fans of the films, are liking the opportunity to work on something, I believe, you know, that's, <laughs> that's uh, just got so much richness to it, so much places you can explore, so many things you can do. Yeah. Um, what You know, who wouldn't want to work on a great title like that, you know? Yeah. No, it's, it's fascinating because you see, I don't know, you look at any position or any developer – and you could just imagine like somebody just coming into it fresh and it's a new IP or whatever. And it's like, they build that appreciation and love for it as they're making it. But for something or an established friend, or the first thing I thought was like Ratchet and Clank. Like when you go in, you know about the history or for, for Hogwarts, like that's just, I, I would say that's just kind of added, right? Because I think you're going to gain that respect for it as you work on it. But then to also know the history in the first place can only help. Well, like uh, in my video, I had the Slytherin banner hanging behind me. So I wasn't yeah. like a big fan when I joined the team. I was more a fan of the property and what you could do with it. But we did this thing kind of early on, at least some of us did, where you take the uh, Pottermore quiz, find out what house you're in. <laughs> they had banners hanging up who was in different houses and stuff. It's just part of the fun. I mean, if, you, if you're going to be authentic, you know, and you're, you, you kind of have to live inside the property, you have to really get behind it. Yeah. And so I would always play these games about, oh, I'm Slytherin, you know, and, <laughs> and tease somebody who's from Hufflepuff or whatever. But it's always in good jest and good humor, right? That it was kind of like, hey, we're, we're, we're playing along here. Like, like when we were doing Cars 2, we took the team out to the Speedway, right? I went to the Bonneville Salt Flats because we were learning about racing and we were learning about cars at the time. That's part of what's great about working in the game industry when you switch projects. You get inside whatever new property you're in and learn all about it. Yeah. That's why Disney Infinity was amazing, right? I still think that's an incredible <laughs> product. So many intellectual properties that we got to work with. Uh, I I said once to somebody who was um, saying, I don't remember, they're criticizing, well, Avalanche hasn't really done a game that's kind of this open world style game. And, and they're right, right? I mean, although there's a lot of that in Disney Infinity, if you look at it. Right. But um, but one of the things that Avalanche does really, really well is they get inside the intellectual property and come to understand it. And you can see it in Disney Infinity, right? Yeah. That they were, even though it's a kid's game, even though you're doing these little figures, uh, Avalanche did a super good job at saying we need to understand each property, make sure the figures reflect that, you know, make sure that the gameplay reflects that. Um, and and uh, in my opinion... And most of the IP, I think this is important, most of the IP owners who worked with Disney Infinity were very pleased, right? They loved what they saw of their product as it was represented in the game. And that's important, right? Because that means whoever owns those intellectual properties are going, you're treating our property with respect. You understand yeah. it. Which I think, in my opinion, is why Avalanche is such a good fit, right? For the uh, Harry Potter world. Yeah. Uh, uh, is that they care, right? They're going to try and do their very best to understand the property at a deep level, just like they have on their past projects, so that when fans embrace with it, they're like, yeah, yeah, these guys know what they're doing. You know, they, they understand what they're doing. Right. So I, yeah, I think uh, that's one of the things Avalanche is great at. Yeah, that's a, that's a big, I think, uh, you know, again, we talked about passion and just excitement from people. I think, you know, the game obviously needs to be good to, to have people be, uh, you know, I guess, for it when it comes out, but also just the general idea of there is 
a respect for the franchise or for the IP, and people can kind of see that. And like I said, I just hope, and I'm, I'll do the best I can do on the channel too to get people ready. I just hope, again, the excluding things, not on purpose, but because of time management, stuff like that, I hope that doesn't, you know, get the wrong message to people that, oh, they, they didn't know about, they didn't look at an Animagus because it's not in the game, so they must not know what that even is. And it's like, that's just what I hope. Uh, based off of the videos I've made, I hope that doesn't spread too far or too loud. I get it. I get how people could come to that, but you know, there's other reasons. Back to the official sources. Right? Back. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm not talking uh, about Animagus. No Whenever I give an example, yeah. I'm not like expecting you to talk about Quidditch or whatever. I'm just saying it as an example. Right. Um, th so I don't know if you can talk about this, but I'll read it anyway, and we can cut it or not. Uh, when it leaked back in 2018, how did you guys react? Uh, was it cool to see the news sites, uh, including Twitter, Reddit, see the fans react to the game? Did you guys know that it would happen? Uh, well, I can only speak from my perspective. I don't know who knew what, right? Because yeah. I'm, I'm in there working on the game. And uh, I think for the most part, it was like, ooh, we don't, we don't want things leaking at this early state because um, at that early state, you're, you're showing prototypes, right? You're showing, you're showing things to uh, consumers that may not reflect the final product, right? Yeah. And so if you anchor in the minds of, of your consumers, of the players, oh, this is what the game's gonna be, and it's really not, right? They were testing something or trying something, um, then you've got a problem, right? Because now you've got it, well, you know, that thing you saw that was a leak, well, yes, that was the game, <laughs> but it wasn't really what the game's going to be. And yeah. that's why leaks are, are problematic, is, is that it sets bad expectations for consumers. They get the wrong idea about what the game will be. I'm not saying that that leak is either right or wrong, you know, that, that came out way back in the past. I'm just saying that's why leaks are kind of problematic to development teams. It, it, it screws up expectations, and then the PR and marketing teams have to come back around and try and fix those expectations. <laughs> but, right? I mean, they, they hit it well because there was the people talking about it, but it didn't get announced for years, years after that. Uh, so that was pretty, pretty impressive. But I will say... Not to get a reaction out of you or anything, but what I will say is from what I've seen, I, I guess I'll even say I'm uh, guilty of doing it. I even did do a video of looking at the leak versus the trailer that came out. A lot of other people, I think, did as well. So I will say there could already be that mindset of what was shown in that thing, which, I mean, it's a good distinction to make, though, right? Because it is just testing ideas and stuff. But I think there is a mindset out there of that's a good pl – I, I think it's more people uh, latching on to it because there's nothing else, though. That's a good – because when there is gameplay right. for Hogwarts, right. I think people will move on and say, okay, this is the new uh, standard or baseline that we have to look at. But for now, it's, well, we haven't seen in-depth gameplay. Because there is gameplay in the trailer, but not, you know, what people, I guess, consider it. But there is a little in that uh, leak. So people will look to that. But I, I think once there's newer stuff, you know, people will kind of move on with. Right. Well, and, and I think uh, this is course i don't know but i think we're, we'll be finding out a lot more information in short order right as things start to go <laughs> ahead and, and uh, I'm, I'm finding out things the same way you guys are now you know uh, it looks like on the website that they confirmed they're going to keep it in 2022 right i mean that that's the current status yeah. is my understanding i don't have any insight that's i'm going from the same place you are but just working in the development industry i can start working things back and say well when, when do they need to start dropping trailers or showing more of the game oh well in that timetable, you can start to get some idea. That's of, what I you do, know, too. You just, you just look at the history of other games in the same, right. uh, you know, right. same area. Yep. I'd like to know if his departure uh, changes the game in any way from what it was originally going to be. So that, well, that we should have maybe mentioned that in the controversy stage. So that was a big thing when you left, what, uh, and you can clarify it, but of, uh, I would say also fear, you know, of does this uh, make them do some radical changes to the game? whether because you leave or because of the con like uh, does the controversies ever really impact and you guys have to have a meeting and say oh well, now we need to do this because the media is saying that so do you want to talk a little bit about if there's ever been big changes because of you leaving or something else um not that i'm aware of i, I don't feel like uh i don't believe in the great man theory you know like like the whole game bends or turns around one person's input right yeah it's much more collaborative everybody's part of things so I, I don't think my departure impacted the game or took it off track or anything like that. Of course, they had a hole to fill. They had to, you know, move people in to right. to pick up the, the pieces there. But as far as, like, feature set or as far as the, the regular flow of the game, I, I don't think it was anything more than a disruption that they had to work around, right? I was not in a position where 
I am directing the entire project, or <laughs> yeah. like that. Which is the, the press kind of made it look like I was, right? Yeah. Especially because they wanted to make me even more. I, they were trying to make it newsworthy, is what they were trying to do. I think they're trying to make this dead channel something yeah, like a senior relevant. producer who even knows what a senior producer does. So you have to make it more. Was that your official? What was your title officially? It was senior producer Sen when yeah. I left. Because right? that's I not exciting. That I don't even know what that means. You know what I mean? I don't think a lot right. of. So yeah. like it has to be. We know what leads lead designer. We know that that's really big. When a lead designer or a lead leaves Bioware. Or like obviously that's a huge story and everybody's talking about it for a couple of days. So that's what they were, I think, trying to do for you too. Yeah. Even when I was in the role of lead designer, I wasn't like running the whole project either. You know, I was I was in a certain. I came to the project after it was already underway, and I was in a certain area of the game, right? A certain yeah. feature set of the game. Uh, and then you know when they asked me to to actually it's a promotion, right? They asked me to become a, a senior producer because I had done a lot of production work in the past. They knew me from you know directing games. I was kind of reluctant at first because I actually like design more than I like production side of stuff, but I also saw that there was a need there that I could help fulfill, and so I was like, okay, you know, we'll 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 move back into the uh, production role. Yeah. Uh, again, we can cut this. I would love to know if the reason they extended the release of the game was because of community feedback and addressing the feedback to the game, thus making the game take longer to finish. So I guess uh, just questions. Um, again, I don't know what you can say or not say. The delay, the delay obviously is a big deal for people. So I won't even lead you. What would you say to people about the delay? About about how to feel about like in terms, should they feel scared? Should they feel worried? Should, is it a good thing because of added stuff? That's a super good question, right? Like when, when Hogwarts Legacy or any other project is delayed, like what does that mean? You know, is that, does that mean the project's in trouble? Is yeah. there stuff? Uh, most of the time, Depending upon the nature of the delay, it's a good thing for developers most of the time. Not 100%, right? Um, so in the case of the the delay for Hogwarts Legacy, they told you in the release, right? They said, we're delaying this. Why? For quality reasons, right? They wanted to make sure they could hit the quality bar. They put it right in the uh, in the release. And and to me, that was absolutely true. It wasn't because the project was like, you know, falling apart. There's awful stuff. It was like, we're looking at our trajectory. We're looking at our time frame. We need to hit quality bars, you know. We we need to make sure that that it lives up. That's that's my take on it, and that was also what the press release said, right? Yeah, they were they were quite clear, I thought, <laughs> in saying, you know, we just want to make the get best game we have, and we need some more time to do that, and that's it. You know, it's it's actually that simple, and that's part of what I like working with WB, uh, as opposed to you know, I loved a lot of stuff about Disney, but they got very quartered, right? They were very much we need a product drop right here. Yeah. And so Disney Infinity was dropping every year, and that's a lot of you know that's a lot of projects to be smashing together. Right. Uh, so when when whenever there's that well, I made that video, but whenever there's a delay in a game and it doesn't look like there's a big change in management, that's that's usually when you know that there's <laughs> yeah. a problem. Is the management flips or something? Now there's something going on over there. Yeah. But if the management is staying intact and it's still the same people working on a project, usually that means a project is probably okay. Right. It just needs some extra polish time yeah and i, I get it. i mean uh, you look at the other wb games as well gotham knights has had well on the surface level from what we see like gotham knights has had issues because it's, it keeps getting pushed lego star wars clearly and even from was a polygon or somebody did an in uh you know an in-depth thing talking to the people that worked there like 30 people there were some legit issues inside of uh traveler's tale games or tt games so they're you know that that kind of stuff and I think that in itself did not help Hogwarts. To this day, it still has not helped Hogwarts. That Hogwarts was the first one, I think, last year, January, what, 14th or whatever. You get that, and it's like, geez, you're doing it already. Beginning of the year, Gotham Knights, I think, did it a month or two later. So now it's like, oh, both of WB's big. And then you have uh, Lego Star Wars that kept getting pushed mm -hmm. two, two and a half years past when it was supposed to. So I think that, that stuff kind of just compounds on people and doesn't make it easier. I get what you're saying. Yeah, like, I'm not um, disagreeing with you. I think that's just a thing. The uh, Being a fan, you see all these games getting delayed, especially all in WB, and that starts to worry them. Right. Well, there's there's pressure for um, your PR and marketing teams not to keep releasing dates. They don't want to keep changing <laughs> yeah. dates because that's messing up expectations. So whenever a game is getting pushed, it's it's a pretty big like discussion. And that's also why they're cagey about dates, right? Oh, They'll yeah. be up front. They don't want to say, oh, it's going to be out on this day. And then they have to push it because it disappoints fans and you don't want to disappoint fans. So they try and be careful about telling dates that they really believe in. 
And the fact that, as far as I know, right, that they said, oh, we're going to try and hold it to 2022, that's that yeah. I believe that's what, you know, that they're holding strong to that. Well, that tells you something about what they feel about the state of the game is, right? Well, uh, I will say this. Um, so one of the areas of the game that I was most familiar with was the Hogwarts castle itself. And I think that thing, in my opinion, is amazing. It's a really, really well done. I mean, a lot of love and care there. I, I, I would joke with a team, guys, this is going to be canon one day. But see, now I'm starting to talk like a developer and I have to be really careful because then people are, oh, he's setting expectations. He's going off the, off the reservation. I'm just expressing my opinion. I think Hogwarts, the castle of Hogwarts is, is really amazing. So yeah. there's a lot of other parts of the game, but, you know, <laughs> they haven't talked about stuff yet. But they have said, oh, you know, Hogwarts is in the game. The castle's in the game. So I guess I can say, yeah, and it's awesome. <laughs> you know, I worked on it. You guys are going to love it. That's my opinion. But wait for the official news, right? Yeah. People, people are into it. I mean, that's what I, uh, that was really the driving thing of what I would say when I first saw the trailer and was doing the reactions to it is like this is – uh, we we have had it because there's been the, the movie tie-ins and stuff, and some of the movie tie-in games were actually really good, or certain aspects of them. And people would even want people have talked about um, uh, Wizard's Chest, like that has been done well in the past, and they say, well, that could be an easy thing to bring back. But the idea of just Hogwarts itself is like it's very powerful, I think, to people that this is our chance, 2021, 2022, like we get to see Hogwarts in a way that I don't really think we've ever. You can explore it in Lego, Lego Harry Potter. You could do it in uh, you know, the past movie tie in games, but something like this, something that, you know, more cho choose your own story, you get to make decisions, make your own character. I mean, it's never been done. Uh, and, and that sets expectations yeah. very it's high. World, right? it's, it's, it's giving the player a lot of, uh, a lot of freedom, right? They, we, yeah. Or the, the team has announced, Hey, it's open world. So you're going to be able to explore all sorts of cool things. Right? <laughs> you, you can go and try and find, discover. Uh, I think, I think people are going to really enjoy it nice just last thing a lot of those questions if you look really closely at trailers they're answering a lot of the questions you that's know what, like that's like what people want to hear <laughs> very good. right just just look really closely at those trailers um you can see parts of the game like has anybody done like a trailer dissection you know I, like they go I through have. scene by scene what is this oh and and, yeah, and there's been people have looked i at... like watch the trailer and i'm like man about half the questions i get asked i think the trailers are telling you yeah know? wow i'll just say it you could cut it so in one of the trailers, I think the the one that's on PlayStations, one of them says late eight or what was it? It was it was originally eighteen nineties, but then they dropped late, late it. Late eighteen hundreds, right? Yeah. yeah, but I but and one of the trailers is one of them said late late eighteen hundreds. I don't know how somebody got the eighteen nineties from there. And then there was another one though where they dropped one of the time period parts to that, where they made it a little bit more open. Maybe because they felt people were getting too close. I, I don't know. I, obviously, I'm not. You can't answer w what year we're in, but you know what I'm talking about. Yes, I do know what you're talking about, and I think the trailer was was setting it up right. And in fact, you see it in all the art and everything else that they're they they are consistently being. You know, it's it's late 1800s sometime. They'll give you more details along the way, but they yeah. they kind of want to set that expectation that we're dealing at a time frame before most of what we are aware of in the wizarding world and that's that's kind of important right that, yeah. that that way you can feel more free within the environment um by setting it at a, at a time that predates stuff so that's yeah. you know that's that's really a, a way to free players up right. right and to have cool stories that you haven't heard before and tie them in you know to the rich wonderful lore <laughs> i'm excited i want i want people to check it out so yeah i do want to say to you and i guess on video too for the interview thank you so much for for doing this with me i thought it was awesome hopefully uh well, hopefully you liked it hopefully also the 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 viewers watching aren't too upset <laughs> that we couldn't answer release date wands quidditch stuff like that um but i appreciate you doing this with me yeah th thanks alex i uh, i appreciate you having me on the show and uh you know if, if i have any last words it's kind of like hey I think you're going to learn a lot more. My opinion is, is people will be very pleased in the game. But at the same time, I should no longer be considered an authoritative source, right? <laughs> I've been removed from the project long enough now that, you know, I, I could just contribute to disinformation if I start, you know, expressing a lot of opinions. So I'm kind of going to continue to be quiet about Hogwarts Legacy until they release more information. You know, when more information comes out, like maybe I'll go to my uh, site and do like, hey, here's my trailer response or something <laughs> goofy or you know, I, I don't know. I'm not sure what I want to do even with my uh, my YouTube site. But at the same time, I kind of think I may go back to it at some point. I don't know. 
That's a powerful tool that I think helped, uh, I think helped you back even with the response video, you know, a year ago. This can be so, just go around that stuff. I don't know if any of the, I think the JK Rowling stuff and the controversies that will continue sadly. And it's up for, you know, other people to, to kind of speak up against it as we get closer, which, which kind of sucks. But I do want to say on that note too, as a final goodbye and stuff, you got my support. You got the fan support. I think if anything was clear in those comments and stuff by even just a smaller group of the Hogwarts legacy fandom or whatever, like we got your back. We want just the best game possible, obviously, you know what right, I mean? Right. We're, you know, there's expectations that are high, but we just want a good game. And I, I think people have your back and you know, they're not going to listen to the PC gamers, IGNs of the world. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I think that it's easy to communicate. You can tell when somebody really cares about games, right? Like, Oh, games is, is really important to me. And that's why I like speaking to enthusiasts, you know, people who enjoy games and and I think that's uh, we speak the same language, right? We, yeah. we just want great games. All this other politics stuff going on <laughs> around it is just making it harder to make games, uh, creating all sorts. It's it's censoring, right? You end up with these problems where they're trying to influence the game, and it's it's creativity from the outside along ideological lines. And I'm like, oh come on, guys, this is supposed to be a creative, free industry. We're supposed to be leading the way, right? Yeah, that, that's uh, and and that's actually something I'm a little bit concerned about now because I feel like the press kind of lost the fight and now the press is all kind of captured. They're, they're saying a lot of the same thing. I'm afraid that some of that same you know, wokest religion is creeping its way into development and uh, other places too, where you know uh, you might have your big games really start to reflect some of the ideologies. I, and, I think and it I will. Think I think I think it's going to take it. But but I will say for gamers. Uh, uh, their side i think they're more of a resilient or uh, gatekeeping obviously is a scary word obviously it could be used in so many and the media would take it so many ways but in terms of like letting this kind of stuff happen to bigger movie franchises or like star wars and stuff it happens a little bit easier i think gamers or people that just love these games are a lot more protective of them where you when you start to overreach and you can smell you know the reason isn't genuine they're pushing an, uh, an agenda or whatever it's going to be harder to infiltrate i think games i think the gaming in the gaming media falling apart right now is pretty good uh you know example of people just aren't gonna deal with it they'll just leave we don't have to right. read these sites you know what i mean I, that's 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 a great point i mean like i realize in my own life i don't pay much attention to the gaming press anymore if i want to find out about a game i go check out reviews that are written by fans right yeah. You get the best reviews in the world, like off of Steam, where they've gone through and they've <laughs> itemized everything. Yeah. And, it, and I'm like, man, this is this is a great in-depth review, and it's told from an enthusiast perspective. That's really what I, troubles me about the press. They they seem not to like games. Yeah. There's kind of this like, like like ah, oh, the game's too hard. The game's this. <laughs> like, come on, there's so many games out there in the world. Just find something you like. I'm I'm a big tent guy, right? right. I'm like. Bring everybody in. I don't want to keep anybody out. Well, the the, mo the, the, the motto of like every yeah. game needs to be for every person has really been twisted where that's not – it is true or the basic idea, but like what they want, one game does not need to be for every single person. You just need to have a game right. that's for every single person. And, and that – but that's seriously lost, especially with – games like Elden Ring and stuff and difficult games that that'll pop up. The game needs to be for you, but there's other games, but no, 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 that game needs to be tailored for me. And that's where they, right. they lose it. But people call it out. People that are from software fans don't deal with that garbage, you know? Right. So yeah, it's, it's just part of working in a creative industry. You're going to have some products that you're going to think that was a bad product or that had the wrong position, but that's okay. There are other products coming down the line, right? Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Well, very good. Well, thank you, Troy, for being here. I guess the official end of the video. Thank you for being here. Thank you to uh, all of you guys for watching. Uh, as I've said, and, and as Troy has said, you know, we could definitely, uh, we'll look to do this again as time goes on. Troy's got his own YouTube channel that I'll link. I don't know if you want me to link your Twitter and YouTube, but I can if you want to, for them to follow you. Oh, that's that's fine. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit unsure about my relationship to social media right now. <laughs> like, because I've been away from it. The family thing like took a lot of my attention. I'm like, I'll just step away from social media. Uh, and now that things have settled down, the family thing is in a much more stable position. It's not illness, by the way. A lot of people are thinking it's an illness thing. It's it's really not. It's more of a privacy issue. Um, so I don't want to talk about the family thing only to say that seems stable to me right now. And the decision I made to leave so that I could focus on the family, you know, on what was going on there, I think was very much the right one because now I'm like, oh, things are so much better. I can actually start to, you know, 
pay attention to other it, things. Well, it's probably better because you got off of Twitter and and the stuff that right. destroys it's your like, mind. So, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> yep, I needed to take a step back. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you to all of you guys for watching, and we'll see you all on the next video.